Morning now. Hey, looks like someone's in the Christmas spirit. Tis the season. Hey, how about I come down to the restaurant and get one of those special Christmas hot cocos you make? You can be one of the first to try out my new holiday cookies. Ooh, how can I refuse one of those special cookies? Yeah, everyone else seems to find a way. So. Mm. Business still slow? People are just too busy this time of year to give a hoot about my little restaurant. It's not grand enough, I guess. Now, don't you worry. People will find you soon. You just need to find a way to get noticed. Well, if you come up with an idea, let me know. See ya. Yeah. Well? Well, I think we can do better. What? Yeah, Mr. Oliver, the Christmas Eve banquet is the most important event for the Kingdom of Edgemont. Your Highness, I'm well aware of what's important to your kingdom. Your guests deserve the very best cuisine in the city. True, but uh, this, what is this again? This is my famous deconstructed caprese. Deconstructed caprese, hmm. Wonderful name, mediocre taste. Perhaps my guests would prefer something a bit more constructed. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's not too much, is it? When it comes to Christmas decorations, there's no such thing as too much. Morning, ladies. Morning, Ernie. What do you think? Are the decorations too much? No. No, not at all. Unless it's not about the decorations at all. It's just I thought it would be different by now. Do you know how hard it is to get noticed these days? You know there's a food truck on 7th specializing in 50 different types of bacon? I rest my case. Jess, it's been six months. You gotta give it a chance. Miracles don't happen overnight. Tell that to Mr. Elliot. Tell him yourself. <sighs> Mr. Elliot, cup of coffee? No thanks, I can't stay long. Hey, Mr. Elliot, um... Jessica, listen. I really appreciate what you're doing here trying to keep the place going and all. There's just so much competition in this neighborhood now. Did you know there's a new food truck over on 7th? Yes, with 50 types of bacon, I know. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Look, I can give you another month, but after that, you're going to have to look for another tenant. We'll figure it out. Sincerely hope so. I would hate to see this place closed down. A month? How are you supposed to turn this place around in a month? I don't know. Christmas miracle? Yeah, I think you're missing the target here, Mr. Oliver. You'll have to do better than this if you want to cater my event this year. I'll have to do better? Prince John. I'm already the best there is. You can't do any better than me. Sadly, I beg to differ. Now, go back to the drawing board and come up with something a bit more appealing. Something that says Christmas more than deconstructed caprese. Prince, this appetizer has been awarded five stars three times. We can do better. It'd be ill-advised to serve this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be heading back now. I can't believe this. My menu is perfect. You're making a huge mistake. Perhaps, 
but it's my mistake to make. Now, if you come up with anything else, please let me know. But the Queen specifically requested me. You can't just leave me hanging like this. Good day, Mr. Oliver. Bobby Flay, not available. Wolfgang Puck, not available. Thomas Keller, not available. What about that fellow from the television show? The one about the diners and the driving? Also not available. Sir, perhaps if we work a little closer with Mr. Oliver, we'll achieve the desired result. That egotistical loudmouth braggart? No, Rupert, absolutely not. You know, I've had it up to here with his elitist culinary affair. We need something new. Prince John, the banquet is Christmas Eve. Today is the 14th. That gives you... 10 days. To secure a celebrity chef and plan a menu for one of the biggest events of the year. <sighs> Plenty of time. Perhaps it's not too late to cancel. Rupert, did anyone ever tell you that you worry too much? Yes. In fact, your mother, which is precisely the reason why I was hired to this position in the first place. Besides, I couldn't exactly say no. No, your royal majesticness. I shan't work for the boy. No one ever says no to her. Maybe they should, though. Hey, can you pull over here? I want to pick myself up a newspaper. Keep the motor running. I'm going to grab a quick bite as no, well. No, 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 sir. I can have something prepared first. At the hotel, your highness. I think I prefer something more native. Do you smell that? It smells like it's coming from there. You, 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 you can't be serious, huh? I'll give you a call if I need you. Now, if you'll excuse me. No, 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 I, I must protest. Good day, sir. Good day to you, sir. Tell me, what is that you're cooking? What, the meatloaf or the, or the cinnamon rolls? I've never smelled anything like that before. Excuse me. Can I help you? Is this your recipe? Look, mister, I'm not sure how things work back in wherever it is you're from, but in this country, food is mostly enjoyed in the restaurant. Out there. <laughs> I'm imposing. My apologies. Excuse me. Hi. I should like to order your a loaf of meat. All right, one meatloaf. Correct. Anything to drink? Uh, coffee would be great. Cinnamon nutmeg or peppermint? Cinnamon. Have a cookie. Here you go, Ernie. Some nerve, huh? Don't you know who that is? I told you she wouldn't know who he is. Know what? Who is he? Prince John of Edgemont. His picture's in all the papers. Seriously? You're telling me that guy is a prince? He's the prince. Well, apparently the prince wants some meatloaf. All right. Well, his highness can have meatloaf. OK. How could she not know? Hey, doesn't know on TV, I guess. Hmm. Here you go. Ah, just what I was hoping for. Do I taste venison? Just a touch. I like to offer something a little different without straying too far away from the traditional foods I grew up with. Well, it's absolutely extraordinary. 
I'd like to get another one to go, if you don't mind. I have someone back at the hotel who would really enjoy this. Oh? My travelling companion. He's kind of like my social secretary. Haley, would you get that to-go order working, please? Sure thing. The trick is to use chicken stock instead of milk. Fascinating. So, what's your story? Uh, Jessica? Jessica, what's your story? What do you mean? Well, you just seem so young to be running your own restaurant. Oh, well, I always wanted my own place. And then when I went to culinary school up in New Rochelle... Culinary school? <laughs> well, that explains it. You're classically trained. Sort of. I figured I could bring everything I learned in school back here and create a blend of fine cuisine mixed with my favorite childhood foods. And may I say you have succeeded admirably. You know, I may be in the market for a chef. As in private executive chef? Not quite. You know, my family hosts a Christmas Eve banquet every year at the Midtown Museum. It's a charitable event and very well attended. How about it? How about what? Would you like to cater the banquet? Wait. What? I love your enthusiasm, and you're obviously talented. I just need someone new. Something fresh that turns the apple cart on its end. All you've had is our meatloaf. Everything else could be terrible. Wouldn't hurt to talk about it. Okay, um, I'm very flattered, but have you looked around? I mean, I don't have the staff or the facilities to cater something that size. I think you're underestimating yourself just a little bit. Don't get me wrong, Your Highness. Hey, please, my name's Jack. Excuse me? My name's actually John. My friends call me Jack. I wasn't sure you knew who I was. They told me. <laughs> Look, um, your friendship, there is literally an entire city out there full of chefs who would jump at the opportunity to cater your... <laughs> Could you just excuse us for one moment? Yeah. Oh, what's going on? Are you even hearing yourself out there? This prince is the answer to all of our problems. You need a Christmas miracle, and there he is. Haley, please. No, she's right. This gig could turn it all around. You gotta take it. And have you thought about just how we're gonna pull this off? Where there's a will, there's a way. You gotta do this. Thank you. Well? Okay. <laughs> we can talk about it. Excellent. When? Tomorrow morning, but it has to be a menu that works for me. Agreed. Until tomorrow. <laughs> wow. A prince walks into our restaurant, tries the meatloaf, offers you a big contract, and then kisses your hand? What a way to start the day. Sweetheart, is that you? Hey, Ma. It's me. Brought you some leftovers. Mmm, this smells good in here. Just like Grandma's kitchen. Who do you think I got it from? <laughs> <laughs> I brought you some stuffed Cornish hens with a brown butter sauce. Ooh, you always bring the most interesting things. How do you manage it all? Well, it was another slow day. They just didn't sell very well. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, sweetheart. The people don't know what they're missing. 
but we're so glad you're here. It's been a long time since you came home for the holidays. I know, I just didn't feel like spending another week alone in New Jersey. The commute alone is killing me. Well, you're always welcome here, Jesse. Take a load off, tell us about your day. Well, for starters, the landlord stopped in first thing. He's really nice, but he wants his rent mm -hmm. and his back rent. I'm sorry, honey. We know how hard you've tried, and you know we'd help you out if we could. No, my problems are not your problems, or at least they shouldn't be anyway. Oh, and we got our first celebrity customer today, so that's something, right? Celebrities are your mother's department. She's always watching that TMP. TMZ? <laughs> Who was it? Uh, a real life prince. Prince? Yeah, John or Jake. John? Yeah, that's the one. Prince John of Edgemont was in your restaurant? And get this, he wants me to cater some fancy event he's hosting. The annual Edgemont Christmas Eve banquet? Yeah, how does everyone know about this except me? Because you don't watch TMP. TMZ, oh my goodness. How exciting. We're gonna have to get you a new dress, something classy. Maybe you'll get your picture on TV. Mom, relax. A real prince. And he's single. Mom, was he wearing a ring? No ring. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, mm. Sorry, Pop. <laughs> So without even consulting with your mother, you asked this young lady to cater the affair. Yeah. Yeah, I did, Rupert. A bold move. And whom did you say this woman was again? That's just it. She's a culinary artist who owns her own little restaurant in Brooklyn. At least I think she does. Brooklyn, I'm so glad you researched your decision carefully before making her an offer. Although, it really is rather quite good. Yeah, it's a pity she hasn't committed yet. Never fear, Your Highness, as I've told you, I've been working on a replacement. <sighs> yeah, I know. So then why her? She didn't even know who I was. Do you have any idea how refreshing that is to meet someone that actually says no once in a while? Well, it sounds like it may be a moot point anyway, which is too bad because this meatloaf really is rather quite indulging. She uses chicken stock instead of milk. Fascinating. <laughs> Don't worry, Jesse. I'll figure something out. Have to. This takes after her mother. <laughs> There's the sleepyhead. What are you doing here? Oh, your mother was showing me the most adorable photos. You were a snowman in your school's Christmas play? Snow <laughs> woman. Thank you very much. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, and look at this one. She's a princess. I think she's been waiting for a prince ever since. Oh. No, 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 no. She certainly has not. How did you even know I was here? Well, I might be a prince, but it's not exactly the Middle Ages. Edgemont has a top-notch intelligence service. Actually, your online business registration listed this as your primary residence. But I don't even live here anymore. I'm. I'm just visiting. Lucky me. Okay, that does not give you the right to track me down, prince or no prince. Are you bugging my phones too? Not yet, should I? <laughs> Look, I told you, I, I don't take no for an answer. So you ready to talk about this? Did you track me down so that we could talk about me catering your banquet? Unbelievable. You said you wanted to talk in the morning and time is of the essence. She'd love to. Mom, can she bring a guest? 
Is there a dress code? Or, I mean, does everyone have to wear a designer dress, or is that more of a suggestion? Can I have a word with you in the kitchen, please? <laughs> but George Clooney will be there, right? Mommy, please. Excuse me, Your Honor. Your Highness. Please, my, my friends call me Jack. <laughs> Mom! We're going. Oh. Oh. He's so handsome. I only told him I would think about it. And he's single. Mom, how long were you guys talking about me before I came downstairs? The point is, Jesse, maybe you have a chance to become a princess. Wouldn't that be grand? You could be the next Megan. Hey, Mom, he wants to hire me as a caterer. That is not a marriage proposal. Not yet, anyway. Mom, please. He showed up at our doorstep at 6.30. OK, well, he really likes my meatloaf. And I love the bagels down to Bergen's, but I'm not exactly showing up at their house. I just don't think he can stand not getting what he wants. No one ever says no to him. All I'm asking is for you to think about it and what it could mean for you and the restaurant. The notoriety alone could pump new life into the place. That's what everyone keeps telling me. Goodness knows it needs it. <sighs> OK. I can see that I'm imposing, and I realize I can be a little pushy at times. So thank you for a, a trip down memory lane. Your house is wonderful. Thank you for the coffee. Thank you. Wait. I'm not sure how I'm going to pull this off, but I do need the gig to pay this week's payroll and next month's rent, so. So you'll do it? You might be sorry, but yeah, OK. Splendid. We have no time to waste. The banquet is just around the corner, and we are starting from scratch. Please, come to the Park Terrace this afternoon, and we'll get started. Park Terrace. Got it. Yeah. Something to get you started. This is a lot of money. It's OK. I trust you. Good day. But do I trust me? <sighs> Jessica, you missed the morning rush. Yeah, we had three whole customers. For a minute there, I thought we were going to have to brew a second pot of coffee. OK, guys, listen up. I just wanted to let you know that I have decided. We are going to be catering the annual Edgemont Christmas Eve banquet. You said yes? And by cater, you mean how many guests exactly? Mm, you know, more than a few. Looks like we might need that second pot of coffee after all. Believe me, it'll work out. We'll make the best of it. I was skeptical at first, very skeptical. But then I started thinking that what will happen when word gets out that we're catering the royal Christmas banquet, everyone will rush in here to get a taste of that royal experience. This could save the restaurant, OK? We'll be good for at least a little while. But we'll probably have to close up shop for a bit to handle everything. Right. So Ernie, I need a list of equipment. Haley, we're going to need more help in kitchen. Can you assemble a list? I will handle the waitstaff. We need to crush it. We've got to crush it. Let's get to it. Ms. Burns. Hi. I'm Rupert, His Highness's personal assistant. Nice to meet you. Ah, welcome. Please come. This way, ma'am. Jessica, I'm glad you could make it. What do you think? Um, nice digs. <laughs> this is nice. It suffices. <clears throat> Your coat, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, um, guest list? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a work in progress. Wow. I am.
am curious about one thing, though. How did you guys get so far into this without hiring a caterer? Let's just say your predecessor and I had a disagreement. Um, <laughs> must have been some disagreement. Play some with only one week left to go. Well, as your predecessor might have said, he'd made a proper dog's dinner out of things. Wait, are you talking about Gideon Oliver? You fired Gideon Oliver? Whatever you've heard, he completely lives up to his reputation. Please, come sit. I'll take care of your coat, ma'am. Uh, tea, sir? Coffee, Ribbit. Coffee. So, these are our previous menus. Let me know what you think. This is your fifth year, huh? As you see, there is a tradition that will need to be upheld. Yes. I'm sure a woman of your talents would have no trouble capturing the dishes on these menus. Assuming that's what we want. I beg your pardon? It's just all so pretentious. Remember, my menu, my way? Of course. But this is a royal banquet. You know, pretentiousness is built into the invitation. I'm not saying it can't be classy. I'm just saying I'm not sure if people would really enjoy... Huh. Poached farm-raised halibut resting upon a dried aubergine with torn mint clam okay. I see what you mean. But it is actually quite popular with the Duke of Shrewsbury. Perhaps, but do you really think the Duke of Shrewsbury is sitting in his limousine, slowly making his way up Fifth Avenue and saying to his wife, I do hope they're serving torn mint tonight. Okay. What would you suggest? I don't know yet, but we do need a menu. You know, something you can walk around with. Something that'll tie this whole experience together. Okay, I was thinking of some kind of greatest hits menu. Um, that's something you do when you run out of fresh ideas. Are you sure you're not overthinking this just a little bit? When you asked me to do this, it's because you wanted something different, right? Yes, of course. Then that's what we're gonna do. Cooking for people at Christmas time is the reason why I got into this business. It's what I'm good at, it's what I do. Trust me, and we are gonna make this a Christmas dinner that no one will ever forget. Not even the Duke of Shrewsbury. <laughs> You're a fascinating woman, Jessica Burns. I've been called many things, but fascinating isn't one of them. However, I do promise you if you stick with me, we'll make this an event to remember. Then stick with you, I shall. There he is, go. Oh, I see him, there he is. Oh, that's my cue. Your Highness. I'll see you tomorrow. Your see you tomorrow. Highness, please. Yeah. I am pleased to announce that we have hired a fantastic new caterer for the event, and everything is proceeding wonderfully. Over here. Thank you. This thing is $500. It's his money. So let me get this straight. He just gave you the cash? He said he didn't want me to worry. Oh, he's got it bad for you. <sighs> Shut up and get back to work. So the banquet is nearly upon us. You don't think I have that countdown seared into my brain? Are you sure it's wise to put so much faith in this woman? This woman has a name. It's Jessica. And is it that much more riskier than trusting that snobby egomaniac Gideon Oliver? That snobby egomaniac has a restaurant empire known around the world. This woman, Jessica owns a small failing diner in Brooklyn. As if any other diner on the Upper West Side would be any different. Have you thought about what'll happen if this doesn't work out? No, I have not. What can go wrong? Everything. Wow. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Haley. I just have to think of a few amazing ideas, that's all. 
All eyes are going to be on this banquet. Rupert, banquet is just a fancy word for dinner. And she is a chef. A great one. I hope. I don't get it. Two days ago, you were dead set against it. And you were dead set for it. A girl can change her mind, can't she? She might, if she had the proper motivation. You like her. Why don't you just admit it? As it so happens, I do find her very talented, yes. And attractive. Yes, and attractive. Oh, come on. You can't tell me you didn't happen to notice he's a devastatingly handsome prince. He's, he's all right. And I'm pretty sure he has his fair share of girlfriends back home too, so. Jessica is completely different than any of the women back home. I get it, I get it. You're bored of all the socialites, so you've gone and set your sights on an American. An American? Now who's snobby? Listen, I worked my butt off trying to keep this restaurant afloat and my friends employed. This is my chance to give us a fresh start. I'm not gonna blow it. Business first. Of course. Business first. You know, all day I'm surrounded by people who are literally literally hired to make me happy. No offense. None taken. Is it so wrong of me to be interested in someone who's actually not afraid to speak their mind, even if they don't agree with you? Seems like it is most of the time. <laughs> yes. Isn't that great? I'll be on my cell if you need anything, okay? okay. That's him. I'm not ready. You're fine. That's my fried chicken. I thought you didn't care. Hi. Hi. Hey, Prince Jack. I was just headed over to the hotel. Oh, we're not working at the hotel. Maybe later. I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Mm -hmm. For me? Sure, it sounds great. Um. Lead the way. Okay. Are you comfortable? Oh, yeah, perfect. I'm fine. It's just I don't normally tool around New York City in a car like this. It's very cool, though. When I started primary school, my mother insisted on our driver taking me every morning. My mom was just the opposite. She let us walk to school every day. She said the fresh air would do us some good. Only time she ever drove us to school was when it rained. My mother wouldn't dream of letting me out of her sight. You know, one day, I decided I was tired of what people were saying about me, saying that I was lucky. So one morning, I got up early, made my own breakfast and took my bike. <laughs> I pedaled so fast, downhill, all the way. Wind ripping through my hair. Oh, she must have had a heart attack. Oh, she had the entire King's Guard out looking for me. How was it? Compared to riding in a limousine? It was, it was glorious. You know, every now and then I'd sneak out and go for a ride. Just go wherever the day would take me. All right, you can pull over here. Okay. Your Highness, Your Highness, Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. Your Highness. Look over here. What's this all about? Who are these photographers? It's nothing really. You know, same old routine. Someone must have leaked my itinerary. What happens? Follow my lead. It's gonna be fine. Come on. Sorry about that. Does that always happen to you? <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid so. What is this? Well, the thought did occur to me that it might be a bit challenging preparing for our guests in the back of your cozy little restaurant. Is that what you think? I just thought a larger space might help. So all this is mine? If you want it. It's too much. It's just... 
an assortment of chrome, porcelain, tiny motors. But the real magic happens here. Thank you. But it's very important to me that my restaurant does all the work. Your menu, your way. That was our deal. You certainly drive a hard bargain for such a young lady. That depends on how badly you want me. <laughs> Touche. So, would you like to continue with the tour? There's more. You would like to see the venue, wouldn't you? Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, this way. Last year, we had service floating throughout this hall, mm. creating a veritable moving feast. <laughs> Everything came to you. Are you familiar with this museum? Oh, of course. Fourth grade field trip. Oh. That's where I first saw this. You like this one? Took an art class in high school and fell in love with it ever since. Tell me about it. It's called Woman Against the World. One of Parker Logan's last pieces. He was an impressionistic photographer in the early days of the Great Depression. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I used to spend hours just staring at this woman, all alone, ready to take on an entire city. And yet she still stands there. Defiant, independent. Maybe what you really see is yourself. You think so? Yeah, I do. Alice waits, my lady. Thank you, Your Highness. See you tomorrow? I'll be there with bells on. Bells on? Is that a Christmas thing? It's just an expression. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ferdinand. <coughs> Where is the king? I believe he's in the middle of his tennis lesson, ma'am. Fetch him immediately. He asks not to be disturbed. Have you watched him play tennis? I've seen a better swing on a playground. Chop, chop. Gideon Oliver is here to see you, ma'am. I don't suppose his morning could get any worse. Oh, Mr. Oliver, to what do we owe this pleasure? Do you have any idea what your son's been up to? Well, at this point, I'm fairly certain that the entire Western world knows what my son has been up to. No, that he sacked me. He did what? Replaced me with that no-talented hack from Brooklyn. Mr. Oliver, I am certain that if my son sought to replace your services, it was for a good reason. I told Ferdinand I didn't want to be disturbed. I mean, what's the purpose in having an indoor tennis court if you can't at least play one match without being interrupted? It's not like you were winning. It's not whether you win or lose, my dear. It's how you play the game, you see. Well, then you were definitely losing. What exactly is the urgency here? Your son fired me. Oh. Sorry to hear that. And who are you? 
Oh, Connor, this is Gideon Oliver, the caterer for this year's annual Christmas Eve banquet. Former caterer. Ferdinand. Ma'am? Please have Mr. Oliver wait outside. But the situation hasn't been rectified. Good day, sir. Now, please tell me that that self-important celebrity chef was not the reason you interrupted my game. Unfortunately not. Oh. Oh. Well, she's lovely. She's a commoner. So what? She's just a caterer. It's not like Oliver out there is the Duke of Essex. True, but the news media isn't treating Gideon Oliver like a member of the royal family. The press loves a good rumor, and that's all this is. I'm sure there's nothing going on between the two of them. Why should there be? Because she's pretty, and he's single, that's why. Well, she is very pretty, don't you think? She's an American commoner. It's insulting. Insulting? To whom? You? Insulting to hundreds of years of tradition, that too. Oh. What in the world am I going to tell the press? That we wish our son nothing but happiness. And we support him in whatever decisions he might make. So, we lie. Precisely. Oh. Now, if you'll excuse me, the score was 30 to nil, but I think I can catch up. Oh. In tennis, it's called love. Perhaps that's what they call it in America, too. Morning. 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 Hey, Al. Hey. Looks like someone made a new friend. Pardon? Seriously. Good for you. I'm not sure what you mean. Come on. Huh? <laughs> Where are you going? Okay, so potatoes are hey. plated to the... Hey, your highness. Look at this. Prince John's new mystery woman. The princess of Brooklyn. Well, you finally done it. You put the restaurant on the map, but I'm thinking maybe you should change the name to something a little more grand, like... The Royal Princess Cafe. <laughs> Seriously, I'm just a caterer. How can they say something like that? People love to gossip. You're the new mystery woman. Seen out and about with the handsome, dare I say, available Prince Charming. I gotta go. So you're saying it's not true? Just can it, will you? My, my, my. Okay. Are you serious? Just one, ma'am. No, 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 Just no, one. no. Just, hey, how long, how Stop. long have you known the prince? Hey, oh, no, oh, oh, it's... hold it. Oh, hi. What's the matter? He looks surprised. I was expecting Rupert. I gave him the morning off. Come in. I thought we could finalize the menu. Been thinking about some of your ideas. Have you seen this? Yes, I'm terribly sorry. And these reporters will jump at anything to sell a magazine. But the Princess of Brooklyn? Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Is that all you can say? That it has a nice ring to it? What, what do you want me to say? You know, people see me with a new woman they don't know, and suddenly the guessing games begin. People are following me. Isn't that what you wanted? Notoriety? Now you've got it. Yes, I wanted to put my restaurant on the map. But not like this. Okay, don't worry. This will all blow over in a few days. I am afraid to show my face on the street. Okay, then let's get out of here. Now we can go somewhere and work on the menu somewhere else. All right, but where would we even go? Ladies' choice. As long as we sneak out the back, my SUV's outside. Okay. I know just the place. Okay. Hopefully, let's go. This is 
gorgeous. This is my first time in the American countryside, you know? There's more to America than New York City. You're not gonna tell me where we're going, are you? I'm gonna take you to see a small town Christmas. Well, that might be a good idea, but we still do have a lot of work left to accomplish. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Take this right up here. So where are we? Maryvale. Maryvale. Mm -hmm. This is where my family goes when they want to get away for a few days. <laughs> Hasn't changed a bit. It's very charming. Are you ready for a real Christmas menu? Absolutely. This way. It's absolutely amazing. I don't believe it. Prince John of Edgemont in my diner. Hello there. I gotta go get my camera. Uh. So much for getting away from it all. <laughs> you wouldn't mind a photo, would you? I'd be delighted. Say cheese, or you know, whatever they say in your country. Cheese. Smile! <laughs> oh my god. They are never gonna believe me. Well, this is my friend, Jessica. Hi. Are you? You're the princess of Brooklyn. No. I'm... Jessica is actually catering our royal Christmas banquet. She is? You are? Yes, I am. Now, if you don't mind, would you please get us two cups of hot cocoa? Come right up. <laughs> So is Maryvale your go-to place to escape the chaos of the big city? Yeah, I guess you could say that. It's a simpler, saner kind of a place. Hmm. Take Christmas, for example. You have your gingerbread house baking, eggnog, candy canes, hot chocolate, honey glazed ham, yams, cranberry sauce. Okay, okay. <laughs> it all sounds very fattening. I know, but what a way to go, right? <laughs> How about you? Are there any special Christmas foods where you're from? Yeah, my family would always have the kitchen prepare a whole feast every year, wherever we were. And mince pies, mulled wine, spiced beef with Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Brings back memories, huh? It seemed like they'd be cooking for days. The whole palace would smell like that for a week. See what I mean? Those Christmas comfort foods. Look at how those memories just came rushing back when you thought about those delights. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's what we're gonna be serving. If we are gonna celebrate Christmas properly, let's transport them back in time and not just visually but with all of their senses. And without all of that pretentiousness. Pretentiousness. You know, you actually might enjoy living the life of royalty. I don't know. That might be some girl's dream, but not mine. Never? I guess I just never identified with that woman who just waits around for her Prince Charming, for him to sweep her off her feet. No offense. I'm taken. Yeah. I believe that I'm in charge of my own destiny. That's just the way I like it. As you say. Here you go. 
Thank you. Your Highness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd be here, celebrating Christmas in a small American town. Yet, here we are. Wow, this is good. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Just wait until it snows. What do you mean? Snow. Oh, come on. You played in the snow before. Even as a kid? <laughs> of course. You've been skiing? Some. I've had a life of royal obligations and services, you know. Mm. Sledding. Toboggan team. How about ice skating? European Junior Olympics? <sighs> yeah, you've been around. When you represent the crown, there are certain standards you must meet. There's no room for slacking off or for not being the best. And there's no room for, for any fun either. Everything's a job. I almost feel sorry for you, except not really. <laughs> OK, let's go. We're leaving? Yeah, going for a walk. <laughs> OK. Let's talk about Christmas. What about it? How did you incorporate it into your banquet? Well, we put a big tray in the center of the room. It was pretty. Is that it? Yeah, I think by Christmas Eve, people are wishing their holidays are over. Well, not me. Not now, not ever. Do you remember what it was like to experience Christmas as a kid? I do, indeed. It was, it was wonderful, if fleeting. You know, my parents would always move quickly into the new year. They never let Christmas linger in our home. Oh, gosh, that's funny. My folks were just the opposite. Christmas lasted well into January. That tree didn't come down until it had to. You know what? Let me show you something. I could spend all day here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's look at over here. Yeah. Isn't this Christmas shop amazing? <laughs> I've always loved visiting this place Christmas year round. Christmas in Maryvale certainly is a sight to see. You know, this place feels more like home to me. We didn't move to the city until I was in high school when my dad got transferred. Mm. I grew up in Hudson Valley. I see. And did you enjoy an old-fashioned Christmas there? Oh, of course I did. But what I mostly remember is my grandma's kitchen and the wonderful smells. <laughs> all the Christmas treats baking, all the smells blending into one unmistakable sensory experience. <laughs> That's what's going to work for us this year. Uh, yeah. I do like the concept. I just think my mother will be quite horrified. Wow. Sounds like your mother doesn't really understand Christmas. Oh, there's a lot of things she doesn't understand, including me. How about your father? Well, my father is the king of Edgemont. He has the bloodline. But as the American phrase goes, my mother wears the slacks in the family. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Everything is just so with her. You know, the monarchy, the tradition, the banquet. <sighs> Even her own son's social life. Oh. Two years ago, she conspired that I be married to Lady Eliza Devon. It was to be the social event of the season. So, are you? Married? <laughs> Heavens no. That woman is a dreadful shrew. Talk about entitled. She is pretty to look at, but she doesn't mean well. And while I know it would have made my mother happy, it didn't even come close to resembling love. That's assuming you know what love is when you see it. Perhaps so, but I certainly know when I don't see it. I bet you do. All right, shall we? It's Rupert. Wondering where I am. Well, we'll let him wonder. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, nothing. It's just you don't really act like a prince sometimes. And how do I act? I don't know. 
Peter Pan, maybe? Peter Pan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. Oh, oh! Easy. Easy, lad. Are you okay? There you are. Now I caught you. Excuse me, what? what's going on? This boy here stole something from my store. Oh, no. I'm afraid it's broken. You know what? His mother's inside. She'll have to pay for it. Please don't tell her. Perhaps I could be of some help if we all just go inside. All right, let's go. So, what is this all about? The boy, his father's in the military. Been deployed for two years. <sighs> Money's tight. He stole the mirror to give to his mother as a Christmas gift. She's very upset, but with no father around the house, I mean, what can you do? Well, I'm assuming this should be more than enough to cover the loss of your mirror. That's more than enough. Then there's no need for any of this to go any further. No, there isn't. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you are, Tommy. Everything's been taken care of. I hope you've learned something from all of this. I'm Mrs. Carter, and I want to thank you for what you've just done. If only his father was here. I heard he's overseas. So long now, I don't even know if Tommy will recognize him. We have each other, and that will have to be enough. Come on, Tommy. Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It was very kind of you. It's the least I could do. You didn't have to do anything. A wise man once said, doing nothing is the undoing of ourselves. Plus, it's Christmas. That it is. Come on. You constantly amaze me. I thought I had you all figured out, but there's a lot more going on here. Jessica, you know, I was born lucky. You know, I want to share my gratitude with everybody, and I mean everybody, not just... Your subjects? Please, I detest that word. It's, it's dehumanizing. Regardless, you have a very kind and generous soul. If only I could do more, though. If our guests can pay $1,000 to attend our silly banquet, then they should be able to do the same. Come on. sharing that experience with me today. You're welcome. And now back to the hotel for me, to face the music. Mm. See you tomorrow. I will wear bells. Both of them. You keep doing that, I just might get used to it. Is that an encouragement? Farewell, sweet prince. No, no, we've checked there. The subway, you can't be serious. No. <sighs> Never mind, we've found him. Just what do you think you're doing? Research. Research. Do you have any idea how many people I have out there looking for you? Rupert, I'm a big boy. Yeah, I can take care of myself. This isn't about whether or not you can tie your shoes or read a clock. You were out there, alone, in the city, without security. I wasn't alone. Oh, of course not. Tell me, if an incident had happened, would she have been able to help you? 
I think you'd be surprised to find out exactly how capable Jessica is. So, you are in love with her. Why don't you just admit it? No, 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 don't, don't say it, don't say it. I've never met anyone like her before. That's because you've never dated anyone outside of your mother's ivory dollhouse. She's a breath of fresh air, Rupert. Finally, a woman who's independent, who fights for what she wants, who knows her own mind. A woman you have to chase, but it's so worth it. And what happens when the banquet is over and you return to Edgemont alone? I don't know. But what I do know is that this year is going to be different, and that is because of Jessica. I see. Your parents arrive tomorrow. You don't need to remind me. I only hope your new girlfriend is ready. I don't understand why we can't just let the boy individuate. It's not about his independence. How about we just think about what's best for him, huh? I want you to consider what is best for your kingdom, for your monarchy. How about a prince who is happy? He will learn to be happy. I know I did. Yes, but he's hardly a child. Wait, does that mean there was a time when you were not happy? Your Majesty, Lady Eliza has arrived. Just in time. Alice, what have you done? Ensure that the great monarchy of Edgemont will continue on course for generations to come. Your Majesty. Lady Eliza, lovely to see you again. I must admit, I was surprised to hear from you. I had read a rumor that the prince had taken a new lady friend without so much as even a word to me. Oh, fake news. Ferdinand, please help Lady Eliza with her bags. Alice, what is she doing here? Would it not be appropriate to invite the only daughter of Lord Willoughby to attend the annual Christmas Eve banquet in New York? No, actually, I would not. Oh, you worry too much. Ah, come. We have a plane to catch. I've written out the final menu. Really? We're going to make this a Christmas to remember. And the prince is OK with this? Of course. Haley, I was just looking for you. I think we're going to need a few more things from the store. <laughs> A package just arrived for you. It's up front. For me? It's from you know who. Really? Um, yeah, where is it? To the most defiant and independent woman I know. Sincerely, Jack. No. I can't believe it. He actually got it. Is that the original? I can't accept this. What are you doing? I'm telling him I can't accept it. You obviously mean a lot to him for him to give you a gift like that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, of course it does. I think the question is, what does he mean to you? It's him. Oh, well, what should I say? You could start with thank you. Right. Hello, Jack. Good morning. Hi, I got your present. I can't believe you did that. Well, it's not the one from the museum, but it's a numbered edition from the original negative. Hope you like it. Yes, thank you. 
It means a lot. Actually, the real reason I was calling was that my parents are flying in this afternoon for the banquet. Really? Yeah, and I would very much like them to meet you. I know you have a lot of prep work going on, but are you available for dinner tonight? Dinner? With your parents? Um, you know, Jack, I... Isn't it... I don't think that's too wise. Don't we still have, like, a whole bunch of stuff to do? <laughs> it will be fine. And your parents are invited as well. Okay. Um, I will see what I can do about that. Perfect. I'll, I'll send a car, say, like, half past five. Okay, it's a date. No, that's not what I meant to say. Yeah, it's a date. Okay, see you then. Bye. I'm having dinner with the king and queen tonight. He invited you to dinner with his parents. You know what that means, don't you? Mm. It means I'm absolutely terrified. Thank you. It's okay. It's nothing to worry about. It's just I've never had dinner before with a king and queen. That's okay. I've never had dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Burns either. <laughs> Come this way. They're waiting in the dining room. Father, I would like you to meet. The Princess of Brooklyn, I believe they call you. Jessica. Lovely to finally meet you. We've been reading all about you. Really? Yes. Mm, word gets around. These are my parents, Linda and Gary. Very nice to meet you, your highnesses. Please, have a seat. We brought a dinner guest of our own. Oh. I believe you know Lady Eliza of Durban. Alice. Is that the Lady Eliza? Lady in the name only. What are you doing here? Don't be silly. I heard that you were hosting the biggest banquet of the year, so I had to see it for myself. Oh, you had to. Or somebody asked you. I've missed you, darling. Darling. Jack, what's going on? That's precisely what I would like to know. I've read all about your Christmas comfort menu. Jack, surely this is another one of your clever jokes. I mean, he's always leading people on with his humorous antics. Eliza, please. I thought you said it was off. It was never on. I don't know about you, but I'm simply famished. I agree, Majesty. Maybe they got some spinach dip. Gideon Oliver came to see us. Really? Mm-hmm. And he told us what had happened. You could have just asked me directly. Well, perhaps I should have, son, but I trusted your judgment. <laughs> you must have great talent, dear, to replace a chef like that. Yes, she does. I presume she can speak for herself. What are you doing? I'm simply asking the Princess of Brooklyn a question. Are you talented, dear? I do trust your son's judgment in that department, Your Majesty. That makes one of us. Mother. 
you have entrusted the most important event of the year to this woman. Don't you think it's my right to find out as much as I can about her? Are you sure this is about the event? Why? Should it be about something else? <sighs> You're incredible. Why, thank you. May I speak, Your Highness? It's a free country. It is a free country, isn't it? Yes. I realize you don't think that I'm good enough for your son, and I don't know, maybe I'm not, but the truth is Jack is a wonderful person with a good heart and a humble soul. Our time last week has been nothing short of amazing, and I want you to know that I will always cherish those memories. Just go. Please take care of him. He deserves the absolute best, and I'm sure you can provide that for him. Liza is not part of my life. Neither am I. Please sit, son. I am ashamed. I can't believe you'd behave in such an uncivilized manner. I'm actually lost for words. Jessica. Jessica, wait. Don't, just, just don't. That's what she does. That's what she always does. But she's right. I'm not good enough for you, I'm a joke. You're no joke. Can't you see what they're trying to do? You know, I thought for a moment, just a moment that maybe you and me had, there was something between us that maybe we weren't ready to admit to, but I can see now that I was being stupid. That's, that's not true. No one knows how I feel but me. You're a prince. I run a diner in Brooklyn and I'm having trouble doing that. I should have just listened to myself in the beginning. I don't belong here and I never did. Jessica, please. Don't worry, your highness. I will not walk out on the job. We made a deal and it was bought and paid for. I will see to it that Haley and Ernie give you their very best. Jessica, please don't talk like I that. I realized that this was all just a business. I just didn't realize that it, it was such a cutthroat business. Goodbye, Your Highness. Good morning. What are you all doing here? I let them in, dear. What? We had to help. No one knew where you went last night. Where did you go? I spent the night in a coffee shop. Well, after you left, I gave everyone a piece of my mind and walked out with your parents. We were concerned about you and thought we would all pitch in to do what we could. 
Ernie and I know your recipes, so we just got started without you. You're unbelievable, Mom. Thank you. Am I forgiven? Let's just get cooking, all right? All right. Mr. de Beauharnais Romanowski, enchanté. Very nice to see you. Hello, ma'am. Looks stunning. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you. Thank you. You definitely are uh, dressed to impress. If you don't mind, I think I'll let my food do the talking for me. And everyone's gonna love it. Even my mother. I shouldn't even be saying this, but I don't even care anymore. This is America. She can't make me eat cake. I didn't do this to impress your mother. I did it because I thought you believed in me. I do believe in you. And now, hopefully, you believe in me? <laughs> really Welcome. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you, sir. Great job. Well, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to announce our very special guests for the evening. The Majesties, the King and Queen of Hegemont. Mother, father. Excellent job, son. Excellent. Yes, I must say, someone certainly outdid themselves. Could this be the work of? Your Majesty, it is wonderful to see you both. Well, um, you did all this. Well, I felt the true attraction of your Christmas Eve banquet is Christmas itself. All of the fine, traditional comfort foods we grew up loving. It was all her idea. I haven't had one of these since I was 10 years old. And we love it, don't we, dear? Well, it's certainly very merry. Mm -hmm. Dig in. I shall. <laughs> Thank you. I actually have some ideas of my own in decorating the palace for a more traditional Christmas. Oh. Yes, I'm thinking Christmas trees, some wreaths, bows, definitely bows. <laughs> mm. How original of you. Oh, I see my special guest has arrived. Gideon Oliver? You invited him? Why not? Now we truly can get a professional opinion on just how well the princess of Brooklyn really did. <sighs> Your Majesty. Is this turkey? It's turkey with stuffing crostini. Tradition with a twist. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I would like to welcome our guests. Shall we go sit right in? Oh. Mm, good. Perfect. Please be seated for His Royal Highness. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. This is our fifth anniversary of this banquet. 
But, as you may have noticed, this year we decided to do something a little different. And that's all thanks to one extraordinary woman who contributed some pretty extraordinary ideas. As you might have read, I recently went on a small road trip to a wonderful little town called Maryvale. And while I was there, I happened to meet a particular young man who told me his father was serving overseas during this holiday. So I thought I'd invite a few special guests of my own. Unable to have a proper Christmas dinner of their own, I would like them to share in ours. Please welcome Tommy Carter and his lovely mother, Jacqueline. Merry Christmas, mate. See you, Mom. For me? Let's all welcome home for Christmas Jacqueline's heroic husband and Tommy's dad, Lieutenant Andrew Carter. <laughs> One more thing. I would like to formally introduce you to the woman who made this banquet possible. From the very first moment I wandered into her little cozy restaurant in Brooklyn, I knew I had met someone special. I just had no idea how special or how much she would make an impression, not only on this banquet, but my heart. Please welcome none other than the Princess of Brooklyn herself, Jessica Burns. Thank you, everyone. He just made the biggest mistake of his life. Oh. Mm -mm. Come on. I can't believe you're actually eating them. Oh, it's adequate, if you like this sort of thing. I mean, I would have whipped it up if they'd asked me. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Try one. Oh. This is awful. Get lost, would you? <laughs> Thank you for everything. You've changed the way I look at things forever. Thank you, Jack. I mean, your <laughs> highness. If I could have it my way, I would cook for you every day. Well, you can, if you really wanted to. But first, you'll, you'll have to forgive me. Can you? Forgive me? I've been an absolute fool. Hmm. Forgive you. <laughs> well, since you asked so nicely. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.